<clears throat> We're on air, Ellie. Oh, no. Yes. You are listening to tjb.co.uk. <laughs> um, welcome everybody to wonderful Bay City, where we are currently <laughs> at the Firecaster building in Bay City, Molesworth. And um, today's topic is uh, a video which L showed me that is from a professor Jeremy Balenson from Stanford University about avatars, eternal life and new worlds. To be quite honest with you, I I watched it but I didn't catch where eternal life Yeah, I kinda missed that part. Come too. comes in there. But anyway. The video is on YouTube, uh, the link I will provide underneath the post because YouTube video links are kind of weird. And um, he, it, it basically it is a speech um, a little bit more, uh, an hour and 15 minutes long, um, which is really, really quite interesting. The co topic can be generally described as the social impact of what? <laughs> Sorry. So funny. I was just kind of dancing around you there. I don't know. It just struck me as funny. I'm sorry. The social <laughs> impact of um, being using an avatar in a virtual world. Um, Professor, I forgot his name, Balenson, is... Um, I think he he works on in sociology and um he gives some very nice statistic insight on how people how using an avatar in a virtual reality influences the self image and the behavior of people now um that's all from me l wanted to talk mo about most of the video <laughs> you are such a liar. One, you you were the one who 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 told me this is so cool and we have to watch it. <laughs> well, it was cool and we did watch it. Yes. And it was cool and we watched it. <laughs> um. The. <laughs> God, I have I have a hard time. Okay, now I'm rambling. You're leaving me. I'm leaving you. Yeah, you said you said we had to sit down, so I'm raising a, a, a car. Um, I have a hard time recalling the the, the talk because in between the talk and the start of this video, I had a ton of technical problems. Which uh, did not get resolved and um, kind a of... A ton. A ton, yes. A ton of them. It was a ton. Yeah, trying to get you viewer 3 working in Mac, then switching over to Windows, getting it to run there, but have no no video capture software and the audio is not working. I'll be back in, 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 in it was OS a ton. 10. It was a ton. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Where's my car? I don't know. There's a car over there in the distance. Is that? It looks like a... A limousine. Where? Over here. Oh. Uh, this other building. Hmm. That's a... Oh, we got rid of the clock building. It's yeah, different. yeah. He's he's. It's still the same dude, and it's still the same empty club that <laughs> nobody ever visits. But now we have um, a slightly different word. It's still the same lovely neighbor we've always had. <laughs> <laughs> 
with those gaudy lights coming out of the top of this building. <clears throat> well, he likes them lights. He evidently. We got rid of the clock. I we'll see it on the on the wheels. You're gonna sit on the wheels? Have a seat on the wheels. Oh, we've got wheels now. Yes. Hang on, hang on. It says drive. <laughs> this is my wonderful um, Citroen DS. I've actually ridden in a Citroen DS. No, you haven't. I have two. No. I have. Where? I told you. It's a long time ago. Okay. It must have been. <laughs> it was. Um. What Professor Berenson Balenson. 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 You remember his name? Well, I remember you saying it. Okay. Um, what was so interesting about it? It was a really cool video. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool. He quoted a few um, research studies that he did. Um, for example, uh, people who have, um, well, <clears throat> it's not just about Second Life. He, he used avatars in general. And um, software today is advanced enough to, um, I mean, with, for example, something like the Microsoft Connect to uh, see your body and your body language and your, your facial features and transform them into an, onto an avatar. So when you lift your, lift, your, lift your right hand and wiggle your finger, then your avatar will do the same, which is actually a really nice feature I would like to see in Second Life because using all these pre-made animations is really kind of tough. Um, in places. But what he did was that he would um, slightly manipulate the, the output. Um, because if you, you know, if you use a software that will record, basically record your physical behavior and transform it onto a, a, a digital behavior, then there is really nothing that will stop you from tweaking that a little and, and changing the output so that, for example, um, he, at first he, he said he did something where a teacher, if a teacher is in front of a class um, talking to the students, then he has to, you know, distribute his gaze among the students so he will, at best, look every person in the eye for just a, a, a couple of seconds until he, his, he go, goes on. Whereas in a digital classroom, you could very easily um, program the um, avatar ad of the teacher so that it will look every student in the eye at all times. Every student will see the teacher look at him or her on their respective end, regardless of where the teacher is actually looking at. There's a mini. Mm -hmm. It's a new Mini, but it's a Mini. Oh, wow. Um, which um, a lot of people, and understandably, found very uncomfortable have being looked in the eye at all times. But uh, it can go further. Um, for example, it, people really like it when you imitate them. 
we subconsciously like it. We most of the time don't even recognize if someone imitates us, um, but it makes us like them more. It's a very basic um, technique in, in, in human psychology that you try to imitate the person you try to persuade. So that you mimic, basically, you mimic their, their body language, you mimic their gestures, and uh, you kind of mimic their expression, their way of speaking. And people really like that a lot. So it is, again, very trivial to program um, a software that will automatically mimic the user's behavior in order to make them like the avatar more. Um, thinking about that, the impact it can have on society and on marketing and um, politi politics and can, are kind of mm, scary to think about. But um, it gives a really interesting insight into human nature. Uh, you're, t you're quiet. <laughs> I thought it was really interesting, the part where he uh, talked about, and you touched on it, you know, that we, we like ourselves and and uh, we trust other people that look more like us and act more like us and um, he had a really interesting part in the video uh, where they did a study um, with the upcoming election at the time it was between Bush and Kerry and uh, they took 200 avatars and, and uh, or, I'm sorry 200 people that they chose for this particular experiment and took pictures of them ahead of time the whole bit and uh, then brought them back in and what they did was take those people um, of course they halved them up and you know did some with one and some with the other but they they took the their own photos and morphed them into the photos of the prospective candidates, such as George Bush. Yeah. And he said that there was a very, very fine line that you could not go any more than, than 43%. They said he, he said they generally like to keep it below 40%. 40% meaning uh, the original image, your image, your picture is 60% original and 40 percent the the features of the target candidate in this case it was bush i think oh, was it that way i thought it was 60 percent them and 40 no 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 no, no. it's it's 60 percent you 40 percent them okay okay i mean it in, in if you look at the pictures you would not you will even if you see if if you know that they are morphed and even if you see the d pictures that have been morphed into something you would still not recognize bush or and or carry um in the picture that has been morphed it will st it still looks like the original person a l little bit different but the differences are in nuances like a little bit in skin tone and faces a little longer or something like that it's not it's barely noticeable, and um, for people who really don't know about this, it's absolutely not noticeable at all. But it will influence their behavior and makes them like the candidate more. Yes. And um, it's not a huge influence. I think they went from from an equally distributed um, uh, test um, group to a group that was like. I think seven percent more carry Perry carry carry mm -hmm. and uh I think Bush gained like thirteen percent I believe so yeah um, which again is is really interesting if you think about um what can be done by politicians if you just uh I don't know, use your own 
or let them access your 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 webcam and then morph a picture of you yourself into one of their candidates and kind of show it to you i don't know i think possibilities are there especially in a time when we are leaving traces all over the web and um give them something to morph around with and he talked about the importance of not having a high resolution snapshot of yourself on the internet yeah um, for various reasons but uh you know for that being one so that you don't leave anything around for people to misuse but they they replicated the same results it, it, they did it again in the um uh bush obama um or i'm sorry uh mccain obama election uh they did it with a uh I believe he said a governor in some state, um, several different races where um, they replicated the same results. So, I mean, it really gives you pause. It really makes you stop and think um, about how these things could be used. Um, another nice inter impact, uh, Elle was always very interested, even though she's very quiet now. <laughs> uh, she she was really interested in everything. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was. Yeah. Um, I especially the part where he, not especially, but also in the part where he talked about people who are using a different gender online than they have in real life, which is really pretty mm -hmm. e easy to do in, in Second Life. And I've done that for a long time, actually, I think for um, three years. Mm. I don't know. I started in 2007 and I uh, met you in 2009. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like two and a half years. And um, it changes your behavior uh, from a personal uh, experience. It changes the way you act when your avatar looks different from the real you. It changes it sometimes subtle, subtly, sometimes more radical. Um, it it kind of feels like you create a a virtual persona. I think everybody does that. It's just mm -hmm. that it feels to me like you make um, like a literary figure, if you would run or write a story or a book or anything, um, you would create all these different characters. And uh, the same is is true for, for your avatar, especially when he's he or she is vastly different from your real self. Then you create this, this persona that is really someone else um, in your mind and you, you act differently. It's kind of like mm -hmm. writing your own uh, script and acting it out at the same mm -hmm. time. Uh, whereas being myself, Vanish, uh, feels very, very different. I'm kind of more, well, myself that mm -hmm. way. I kind of like it like that. Um, we lost the car. Did we? Car? No, there it is. In the car. <clears throat> but he had just done lots and lots of studies, you know, that showed that um, if the people, you know, if someone looked more like you, you would be more likely to trust them, you would be more likely to leave your children with them, you would, uh, you know, be more likely to, to do anything for them, you would feel more for them than you would from someone that looked drastically different from you. Uh -huh. Then he went on and talked about um, social change and, and the way that an avatar can be manipulated to influence our 
daily activities or the way we think or feel about something, um, such as exercise. Um, he talked about how that um, in one of the studies that they did, they would have built an avatar that looked exactly like someone. Uh -huh. And then that person would get in a room and move. And as the person would move, um, it would show their avatar moving. And the more he moved, the avatar would begin to get thinner, um, looking like he was losing weight. And then if the avatar stopped moving, then you could see him putting on more weight. And uh, they, they did a few experiments with uh, weight-related things such as that. And um, it was really interesting. At, at one point in time, he gave the people the, the choice afterwards, after it was all over. You know, they said, you know, you're finished. You can go ahead and leave if you want to. But, uh, but we've got 20 minutes between now and the next um, thing that, that we're going to do. Uh, and you know, if you'd like, you can stay here and, and exercise during that time. And they said that, you know, the people were much more likely to stay and exercise at least 10 minutes uh, during that period of time, uh, whereas otherwise they, they wouldn't. So it was, it was really interesting, I thought. Um, Speaking of the, the implications on society, I'm... I'm really kind of surprised. I mean, I had a talk about OpenSim yesterday where I gave a short speech workshop-like thing uh, in real life and talked to a group of people about what OpenSim is, what Second Life is, how it may impact us. And I kind of started out with um, the line that it's basically about what the web will be looking like in 10 years and I mean, thinking about it, it was kind of a steep opener, but it is really something that is is absolutely natural to me and absolutely without question that this is the way things are going to be evolving into. Um, so I was kind of taken aback when people were like, yeah, I don't think this stuff has any use at all I don't see it getting anywhere and there is no traction there nobody uses it and and there's no use no real use for it it's very unlikely that the web will ever adopt any of 3d technologies avatars or something like that um, whereas I don't know it's just normal to me to assume that that it will that this is actually where we're going to so um I think it is very important to understand what avatars will do to you because sooner or later everybody will have one. And I mean, we can see in Second Life where this is going to be heading. A lot of people will create their perfect self. Um, I mean, there are hardly any ugly avatars in Second Life. There are no obese av avatars in Second Life. There are no people or very little people who really try to make their avatar look like themselves in Second Life. And if they are saying that they want to make the avatars look like themselves, then I'm usually very wary because then it's it's all fake. It's usually a, a lot of, of wishful thinking involved and um, I, I wouldn't really trust that. So having an avatar has a lot of great uses for people um, that most people <laughs> seem not even be aware of. It helps you 
identify with your online self more. It helps you try out new and different things. It helps you, you with behavioral issues. Mm -hmm. And it's just a lot of fun. And I don't know why the streets are ending here abruptly. They do. And he did talk about how that, you know, when you have a um, an avatar that you consider to be pretty or prettier than yourself. Uh, more attractive, I guess, is is the politically correct way to say that. We don't care about politically correct. No, well, um, you do. I don't. <laughs> it's the different countries we come from. I think. Is that so? Yeah, maybe. But um, he said that that when you have an avatar that you perceive as being, you know, even slightly more attractive than yourself. Um, that even after you have gotten out of that virtual reality and back into the real world, um, that you still carry some benefits for a limited amount of time uh, in the studies um, from that relationship that you had with the avatar. You know, you feel more empowered. You feel more... Um, able to do things you 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 feel better about yourself um, better able to function perhaps in in society um, it, it just kind of changes the way that you see things so does that work for you it does work for me it always has worked for me I've always noticed that particular effect and, and you know people look at you like you're crazy when you tell them but you know I I noticed early on how much better I felt physically uh, having been very ill at the time uh, when I was in Second Life and I was L um, I, I felt so much better physically um, while I was her in Second Life and even afterwards I would take her to a very nice quiet serene place and, and leave her uh, in a very comfortable position to sleep and, uh, and when I left her there I, I just felt very good about that you know I, I felt like part of me was was resting and relaxing and recuperating and recovering and, um, and and I felt really good about that and I noticed that even for days afterwards when I would be out um, in the general public if I uh, didn't feel well if I thought of her and, and thought of who I was in Second Life um, I, I just felt better. I felt better able to handle my circumstances. I felt better physically. Um, I mean, it, it really is almost like a drug, you know? I mean, if they could give you some kind of a pill that would make you just feel better, mm. uh, that, that's what it reminded me of, something that, that you could just do for a, a brief period of time that could really affect your outlook on life and, and really make you feel better. And for people that struggle with chronic illnesses, um, I think it, it really um, is quite beneficial. That's true. We have a, he, in the side note he 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 kind of um, <coughs> mentioned that one of the studies showed that funny enough the the, the um, how did he put it the relation 
on whether or not you're likely to engage in the virtual world and feel good about having an avatar is related directly proportional to to um to the to number of times the amount of times you spend in in church services in yeah. in church per so year. that people who are regular church goers are in uncomfortable with having an avatar yeah which is i mean i'm not a regular church goer so i'm i'm fine with it but l <laughs> is slash was <laughs> Yes, and, and it was a little uncomfortable for me at times. Uh, not for me, but uh, from the negative reaction that you would get from your fellow churchgoers or from your family members um, that viewed it as being, first of all, a total waste of time, uh, second of all, uh, some type of manipulation of your mind, uh, some type of evil, uh, something or other that that was not to be engaged in, was not to be played with, um, and they they couldn't see the the good benefits from it, the good things that could come out of it. Um, it was just where I came from, it was just viewed as evil. Now, the professor did not say this at all. Mm -hmm. he, he just kind of said that that was something that they had noted in their statistics and they'd not ever published it and it was not official. Um, it was just something that he was telling us. He said it was nice cocktail party chatter. But... Um, I, I knew exactly what he was talking about, and I knew exactly why uh, people that are generally avid churchgoers are more uncomfortable with um, with an avatar. Um, they they view that as uh, some type of vain imagination. Um, so is that is that because it is being taught to them? Or is that because people who are going to church are more likely to have a certain mindset that is incompatible with, with virtual worlds? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. That's a nice um, I, I do think it's a little bit of both, but, but I know in my particular uh, circumstance that it was directly taught that uh, imagination was not a good thing. And so, uh, what, I mean, what are they... What are the grounds for that? Um, well, that gets really, really complicated. Um, you know, because it, there are lots of, of different uh, points of view that they use to uh, justify that, you know. But a part of it is, as, as I was telling you earlier, about as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. And... And, you know, just generally, if you want to go a very, very general route, you can say that uh, if that is the case, you know, according to the biblical principles, uh, then all that you really need to be thinking about is uh, Jesus and his teachings and his principles, and that's what you want to become. You want to become him. Uh, so, you you know, the less amount of other crap that you have in your mind, then the more Christ-like you are. Yeah, but I mean, that kind of, uh, I don't think that is really an explanation for it, because you can also think of be a Christian in Second Life. You can also think of Jesus in Second Life. You can Which also is true. Work, Which is work true. towards him or in his... Yes, thing. yes, and, and I, you know, I did talk about that as well. Uh, but you and I both know that when people think of Second Life, they don't think of church. I mean, well, you know, the first thing that mm -hmm. people think of when they hear Second Life the is... The sex. Yes. <laughs> is the sex and how terrible it is. And, I mean, my family members thought that it was just, you know, like a a den of iniquity. You know, that Where'd you they hear, hear about it anyway? About um... I, I really don't know. 
I really don't know where they, I mean, it, it, to me, it felt like it was something contrived, something that they had just made up inside their head that they... Yeah, but they must have had, had some kind of basis for that. I mean, it, just looking at Second Life does not show you the sex, unless you are, I don't know, in some kind of weird orgy sim at the time. I, I don't know, love. I can't tell you exactly where they got it. I mean, they when I asked them, I was not given any real basis mm. uh, to, you know, that they based that on just mm. that that was what they had heard or, you know, perhaps they had seen, you know, a lot of the... <laughs> I mean, you do have to admit, of course, you know, you here in Europe are, are much, much, much different than we are. And I lived in the Bible Belt, so uh, it's completely different. But, I mean, you have to admit that if you <coughs> just uh, look at someone in Second Life for a 10 or 15 minute period of time, you're probably going to see some women, especially, that you feel are very inappropriately dressed. Um, you may. I, I've never seen anyone being inappropriately dressed. I think they're yeah. all very appropriate. Well, it. I mean, that's that's that was not the case. Okay. Where I came from, uh, most of the women were very inappropriately dressed, uh, according to others. Uh -huh. And um, you, you know, you might see, I don't know, a man and a woman kissing or, you know, two men um, being intimate together or, you know, you, I mean, you can see any uh -huh. number of, and, and for people that, that have no imagination, you know, to, to see you standing next to a furry <laughs> uh, you know, trying to buy some weird outfit on the wall that they can't even comprehend how to put on. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, the whole thing is so odd and so totally out there. I mean, it really is like Alice in Wonderland to people that, that have no sense of imagination. And uh, they they cannot comprehend how that can be a good thing. You know, they, they view it, first of all, as a total waste of time. And uh, second of all, is as bordering on the edge of, if not, evil. Huh. Yeah, really. Huh. Yeah, and that's, you know, I'm not saying that every church is that way or... Uh -huh. Especially not that every Christian is that way. I mean, I, you know, I was not. But um, where I came from, the experience that I had was so uh, that the majority of people, fundamental um, evangelical Christians. Um, yeah, that's like kind that. of neat. Now, you have a situation where a second life is either viewed as completely waste of time because it's, it's useless and nobody uses it, or because it's evil and also a waste of time because too many people are using it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I case. had one family member in particular tell me that only losers uh, came to Second Life. You know, that it was only the, the trash of society hmm. that came there. They were either you know, unable to function in society and so they chose to live in this imaginary world or they were just so filth-minded that they had to come to Second Life to fulfill their evil, wicked desires. And they, you know, they, they were incapable of having a real life. And so they, they viewed them as the losers of society. And this particular person that told me that honestly did not know how to start or turn off a computer. Yeah. You know? so I, I, I mean, uh, just being in Second Life requires a certain level of technical knowledge that not everyone has. So I just, I found that very interesting. I guess it depends on what your definition of loser is. True. <laughs> It's true. Very true. 
yeah, but it was not looked at as a good thing where I came from. So mm. that that was really unfortunate because there are so many good things that can come out of it and and that it can be used for. And as you said, there are churches here in Second Life. There are church services. Uh, people that cannot get up and go to church on Sunday morning can come here and do so if they desire. And um, I, I just think it's a shame that, you know, I tried to explain to them that filth and evil is anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's here in real life everywhere we look. Yeah, I mean, second life is no different from real life. No, you, it's, mean, it's what it's you made choose of real to people. do. <laughs> yes, it's what you choose to do. You can be nasty and evil in real life, just yeah. like you can in Second Life. It's what you choose to do with it that makes the difference. Mm. I guess that's why I found uh, this particular study so fascinating, it was because there were so many um, things about avatars and their use uh, you know, that could be put to, to some really good purposes. I uh, talked about, you know, using uh, avatars with children with autism, that there had been some um, advances in that arena and that they, they found it quite um, helpful in certain uh, things. Um, uh, you know, just like the thing that I told you about with the, the obesity, that they thought that it could really, really be useful um, for obesity. And, and they had done some a little longer-term studies. They you mean with the exercising? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but this other, this other study, he said that they, they put someone here in Second Life and made them be fat, which... You know, yeah, is an oddity. I think oddity. a group of people actually. Uh, I, I don't know. I but remember anyway, it was several people. Yeah. Um, he said that afterwards, um, that they they kept that that reminder with them for a long time of what it what they looked like and what they felt like uh, being overweight, and it helped them to not want to be that way. Uh, which I thought was just interesting. I mean, I just thought that was interesting. Um, he talked about um, using it, which I thought was really interesting, for um, ecological reasons that they um, had... Yeah, th this was not Second Life, though. Well? It, it, no, they, they used uh, some kind of simulation where people would experience yeah. audibly... From a first-person perspective, they would even feel the vibrations mm -hmm. in their hand, what it would feel like to chop down two trees. Um, because they have before been told that using non-recycled tissue paper would, you know, kind of, yeah. Be like destroying two virgin trees. Yeah. And so they made them experience um, how it would be like to, to actually chop down some trees and they made a very realistic and convincing simulation of a forest with bird noises and lights and, and the sounds and um, then put them in that forest and made them experience how it is to, to chop down trees actually. To have to chop them down. Yeah, they had no choice in that matter. And uh, it in an, in an another experience right afterwards they would um, uh, use less tissue paper actually than a control group that had not that experience um, if, if there not are any in the bathroom. lasting <laughs> sorry? it was not in the bathroom no it was not in the bathroom <laughs> no they spilled some water and had to clean it up you so. might want to turn off your AO now now you're chop looking out of the uh oh roof. well I wanted a better view. Yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> Let's see. This is not the way to do it. Well, I've got my AO off. Hmm. Huh. Well, that's weird. Maybe if you get up and stand and sit Should down again. Should I stand up? 
On the wheels. On the wheels. Uh. <clears throat> Yay, there we go. And um, something that always interested me um, is that people are, if left alone and unchecked, um, usually creating pretty avatars, beautiful avatars that they kind of see as being beautiful. Um, what I always wondered is how this, this ideal, this beauty ideal um, is being created. Um, I mean, obviously and historically, uh, the ideal of beauty changes throughout time. And uh, what we today perceive as beautiful is something that was not beautiful or not as beautiful like even 20 years ago. It was very different like 50 years ago or 100 years ago. People, mm -hmm. the ideals of people are have been changing over time quite drastically. I mean, we were talking about obese people. There were times and there are still societies where obesity is, is something that is um, considered pretty. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm, I'm not sure where, how the, the dynamics are um, in that respect, how people, why people consider a certain avatar shape or avatar um, look to be pretty. But it, it's pretty obvious that um, most men are choosing this muscular, hulky guy. Mm -hmm. I, I really, I have, this is my own theory about that. But I really think it's not because they, they, they think it, he's, he's very good looking. But it is because it's some kind of a freebie shape that they got somewhere <laughs> and they just are too lazy <laughs> to edit that to their own wishes. Could you, be. Seriously, because most of them are using this very standard freebie shape that mm -hmm. you can get almost anywhere. I mean, all of the male freebie shapes are this muscular, hulky guy. And, uh, and, and they are really unedited exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, most men in Second Life don't... I don't know if this is telling about real life too, but don't give much of a shit about their outlooks anyway. I mean, they're, mm. they're, they're, they're yes. having a freebie jeans and, and some t-shirt they got <laughs> from, from their favorite nightclub and then they're f good to go. Mm -hmm. It's just... Mm. Yeah, I never understood that. <laughs> Another European thing. Why? I don't know. Everyone here seems very well dressed. Not sure about that. You don't see any jeans and t-shirts very seldom. Maybe some of the younger kids every now and then, but not really. Okay. It's just a different, different way of dressing. But I think in general, men don't care as much about their appearance as women do. Well, talking about women. Um, th oh, the standard, <laughs> yeah, w yeah, yeah, sure, here we go. <laughs> Every time we talk about this, you, you are, you agree with me, you kind of laugh with me and, and, and we have fun about it, but now here we go. <laughs> well, it's kind of a long <clears throat> subject. Um, there, I mean, we, we all know the, 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 the Second Life Barbie shape. Yes. That is these thin... Slender is probably the right way um, to say. Uh, slender, tall, m m nice proportionate wom woman with blonde hair. Mm. Is it always blonde? Not always blonde hair, but I mean, the shape is pretty much the same all over mm -hmm. Second Life. It's kind of like the hulky guy. Maybe it's, it's some kind of a freebie shape it, that they picked up. Um, faces, are <laughs> faces are especially bad. Because faces are usually 
very, very similar. Most of the Second Life females have the slanted almond-shaped eyes, usually turned upward. Mm. They have the very small nose and the fat lips. Uh, I don't know, it's always the fat lips. Recently, the trend has been going to downturned fat lips, but it's still fat <laughs> lips. I really don't know what's so, ha what's so pretty about fat lips. <laughs> and somebody really needs to explain that to me one day. No. But um, that's that's the way. I mean, I could I could probably, uh, off the top of my head, make the general second life male and female shape uh, and and sell it on marketplace and make a fortune <laughs> and stuff. Um, but I really don't know how this ideal has has come to exist. I mean, a lot of. I've seen a lot of models or self-proclaimed fashionistas um, having a horrible shape that is too much too thin and too long, especially. Yeah, very elongated torso, especially. Yeah, uh, and the limbs, too. I mean... Yeah, it's almost alien-ish. And, um, and then have these, these really fat lips <laughs> on top of that. And... Um, and seem to be perfectly happy with it. I mean, ob ob obviously they, they, they are posing in fashion and, and uh, making pictures of themselves, putting them on the web and, and uh, are perfectly happy with themselves looking like that. And I, even if it's overcompensating, it's a bit much overcompensating to me. But it, it's just so, so weird. And then we have uh, cultural differences. We have the big butt Latinas. <laughs> uh, There's still an, another trend that I really don't don't get. <laughs> What's so funny? I was just thinking about the last one I saw. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. Elsa her prefers jiggly butt lately. <laughs> I have not ever seen one. <laughs> I'd seen jiggly boobs, but I just didn't know the butt would do that too. And I guess I'd never seen one big enough to actually jiggle. No, that's not. No, you can. It's it's. A I've new never feature. seen Elle's butt jiggle. No, Her Elle's butt, butt because jiggle. Elle's butt doesn't jiggle. Do, do you have the avatar physics where you can define the areas of the avatar that will jiggle. Okay. That's a, a, a feature of of viewer two, viewer three that they introduced. I think. Uh, almost a year ago now. So, like, if I wanted my flabby underarms to jiggle, I think you could do that if I you wanted. Do that. Yes, I think you could do that if you wanted. Great. <laughs> I mean, uh, you can probably make every part of the avatar jigglish. Wow. I have to look into that, but you know, people are using it, of course, for boobs and butts. Well, that was quite impressive. And, it, of course, it shows better the bigger your butt is. It was a very large one. Yeah, I think it doesn't get any bigger than that. It was a jiggling. It sure was getting there. Jiggle on. <coughs> <laughs> so, and, and that is really the interesting part, because as... Again, quoting from Neuromancer, as as Mr. Professor Halberlin, Hal Halderson, Balenson, <laughs> Balenson also <laughs> did. Um, Neuromancer it. opens up with this very nice line where chat is at the at a, at a gaz, no, Chatsubo, um, which is a bar in in Chiba City. And the bartender is notably and quite remarkably ugly, which is uh, something very, very striking in, a, in an age, in a time um, where people can afford to be perfectly pretty at all times. And um, the same is true, actually, for Second Life. So... Um, the the research that is being done by Stanford University mostly applies to people who are, I mean, 
in many cases, the avatar looked like the person in front of the of the screen. Whereas, um, uh, the what happened to me? <laughs> sure, Ellis. I don't even know where you left her at. You you left her abandoned in somebody's place that she's fixing to get ejected from. Oopsie. Um. Sorry. With no AO on. Whereas in Second Life, you can choose the way you look. Uh, y anyone can look any way they want to. And, um... The interaction between make creating the, op the perfect you and, um... being yourself is is the one thing that is going to be very very interesting to watch and uh, probably is going to be a, an area for study for the years to come and um so stopping here there you are, you little short man, you. This is just your 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 <laughs> shoes. What are the shoes from anyway? They are from Bax Cohen, aren't they cool? Is that the name of the shop? Uh, I think it's Bax Boots. I think something Bax Design, something of that. They're effect. nice. They look I a little cartoonish, beautiful. actually. Oh, I love them. I think they are beautiful. And the rest of your outfit. Oh, I knew you were going to ask me the hard questions. I actually bought this entire well, outfit should, should from, from the dressing room. They are separate pieces uh, yeah. that I put together, but the entire outfit was bought at the dressing room, um, with the exception of the nails and hair uh, and skin. Well, but the, the outfit. trolley you're almost ran us over. Um, Did you see that? What was it? The trolley. It almost ran us over. Yeah. Well, we are kind of standing in the middle of the street. Yeah, but they could have stopped. <laughs> yeah, especially for my Bax Cohen booties. Uh, yes, but the uh, shorts are from LG Femme. Uh, the top is from Fishy Strawberry. And this lovely little necklace is from Glow Studios. My nails are from Purple Moon. The skin is from Akaruka. Nice. Yeah, the nails are really beautiful, aren't they? Uh, the skin is from Akaruka. Of course, fascism eyes. Are there any other? And my hair is actually uh, one of the newer uh, men's hairstyles from Ali and Ali. That's the one I had. I was supposed to model. Well, you could have, yes. She's come out with several. Looks recently. better on you than on me, actually. Isn't it cute? I just thought it was too cute. It's nice. I I really really liked it. So. Okay, thank you for watching. If you are still watching, which you probably are not, <laughs> and um, see you around next time, where we will talk about. Some other things that will not interest you. Me, 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 me. In, me, me. We will talk about L. <laughs> um, yeah. See you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Let's start. Not true. That's great of you. Ha 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 